there's been talk for a while now that uh, many of these huge batteries that are being built around the world, I mean, for example, Tesla, they just got a contract to build 16 gigawatt hours of energy storage batteries. There has never been a time in the history of mankind that this many big batteries have been contracted or are being built. And they're all lithium batteries. They're all pretty much now lithium ion phosphate batteries using generally CATL battery cells. However, experts believe that that's about to change. Now we know that Tesla for their mega packs, they use lithium ion phosphate cells from CATL or CATL, the biggest battery manufacturer in the world. And they repackage those cells. They kind of put them into these mega packs Tesla, of course, is the biggest manufacturer in the world of mega batteries. Tesla isn't yet using sodium ion batteries, but a lot of people think that that's going to change. And this is why. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. It's great to see you. Guys, energy storage is so necessary because solar gets wasted. Solar power gets wasted. Here in my home here, I just had a, a big... A big solar system installed and I cannot possibly use all the energy it's generating during those peak periods of the day between about 10 o'clock in the morning you know, about 4 p.m. in the afternoon it provides more energy than I can possibly use so that's when the battery storage comes into play and it's the same for grids all around the world it's it's drastically changing grids as soon as they install big batteries what this means is your energy cost will go down because then all that solar that would have been just wasted or curtailed, as they say, is used, is soaked up by these big batteries. And then between 6 p.m. and about 9 p.m., the peak period of the evening, they can then deploy all that virtually free energy. So lithium ion phosphate batteries are the best technology up until now because lithium ion phosphate batteries are the most affordable battery type. One, two, they last about twice as long as the well, the previous batteries that Tesla were using, or the batteries you can buy in many EVs today, lithium ternary batteries. Generally, they are an NMC chemistry, nickel, manganese, cobalt, but there are other chemistries like NCA, nickel, cobalt, aluminium. There's, there's various chemistries, but really there's two different types of batteries in the lithium battery world, LFP and ternary batteries of various chemistries. Of course, energy storage, LFP makes sense because, well, the extra weight of lithium ion phosphate batteries doesn't matter for a mega battery pack. It's just sitting there, it's not moving. And those LFP batteries, like I said, are, well, they'll last longer. Plus, they are much less likely to catch fire. But they do have one drawback. Their performance in very cold weather is it's not good. What it means is that when temperatures go below about zero degrees Celsius, they start to, to lose a significant amount of their charge. So if you're living in a cold city, a really cold city where it snows, then you're going to get some pretty significant uh, battery drawdown when it gets cold. Sony ion batteries don't have that problem. And potentially, they could be cheaper than lithium ion phosphate. They weren't until, well, the last couple of months. Over the last four weeks, the price of sodium ion batteries has fallen by an additional 9.4%, according to data from Chinese experts, meaning that now, for the first time in history, the cheapest batteries you can buy are sodium ion batteries. Now, it's true the energy density of these batteries is less or lower than LFP or lithium ion phosphate, but not by a lot. Here's an example. CATL sodium ion batteries have about 160 watt hours per kilogram of energy density. Their LFP batteries have around 190 watt hours. Not a huge difference. What's that, about a 15% difference, but it's still a difference. However, with costs fast declining, sodium ion batteries look set to dominate the future of long duration energy storage. Artificial intelligence based analysis says that um, basically if you put this into chat GPT, into artificial intelligence, it will tell you the future of the energy storage market is not lithium ion phosphate batteries, it's sodium ion. Sodium ion batteries will disrupt the LDES market or long duration energy storage market within the next few years. Now, this may not happen to home batteries like Tesla Powerwall, for example, but when it comes to long duration energy storage, grid storage, it will. Sodium ion batteries are not only improving at a faster rate than lithium batteries, but they are also set to be cost comparable with the cheapest forms of dispatchable power 
and therefore enter mainstream use in 2027. Now guys, I just did a video. You can already buy a 12 volt sodium battery for your electric car or for your internal combustion car if you want as well. It's a pretty big upgrade over a crappy lead acid heavy battery. A sodium ion battery will last about three times as long as a lead acid battery and they're very cheap. 300 US dollars is the price right now in the United States to buy one of these sodium ion batteries with a guaranteed three year warranty. Affordable long duration energy storage is a fundamental milestone for the global energy transition because it addresses the intermittency of renewable energy sources such as solar and wind that do not produce electricity consistently. By storing excess energy generated during peak production times and releasing it during periods of low production or high demand, long duration energy storage systems, or let's just say mega batteries, ensure a stable and reliable energy supply essential for reducing dependence on fossil fuels and enabling the widespread integration of renewable energy into the power grid. Very, very quickly, you'll find once these batteries, these long duration energy storage batteries are built, peaker plants, gas and even coal powered peaker plants, they are annihilated very quickly and people end up losing billions of dollars. Now, I don't feel sorry for them to be honest because uh, let's be frank, the writing's been on the wall for many years. And a lot of these companies who have built these peaker plants, these fossil fuel peaker plants, they chose to do that instead of building a, re a renewable energy version. So it really was their choice. Using a quantitative method inspired by research from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, Get Focus estimates how rapidly any area of technology is improving and if and when it will disrupt its market. Using global patent data, the system is ca calculates technology cycle time, how many years it takes for a technology to, pr to produce a generation, a new generation of itself and its knowledge flow. How significant of a step forward a new generation represents. Using those metrics, Get Focus calculates the technology improvement rate, which represents the average percentage increase in performance per dollar that can be expected from an area of technology in one year. Now, if you apply all these focuses and metrics to things like uh, internal combustion engines, uh, the, the improvements are so minuscule from spending billions of dollars for new generation life cycles that the system would just laugh at you. I mean, it's ridiculous. The same thing goes for fossil fuels. If you try to improve a coal power plant, a gas power plant, even nuclear, the improvement, the life cycle is so long and so expensive that it really does make renewable energy look like it's the only choice. Essentially, we're able to measure how hard a problem is to solve, says Kasper Gorski, Get Focus Head of Operations. Sodium battery technology is experiencing similar improvements in areas such as energy density as lithium ion batteries did 20 years ago. The associated cost reductions will mean the emergent technology is set to become a competitive solution for long duration energy storage by 2027 at the latest, at which point it will likely begin to replace lithium ion phosphate. And the system predicts that by the mid 2030s, it will be the dominant form of batteries. Analyzing 30 different long duration energy storage technologies, the research found sodium ion batteries will hold the most promise due to their fast improvement rate, around 57% in 2024. They offer more efficiency in round trip energy use, greater operational flexibility, and lose less energy during storage and supply. Their rapid improvement rate will likely lead to better energy density and reduce the cost per unit of stored energy, positioning them as the most versatile option across the energy grid, even in large scale operations, says the report. Now, need I remind you that they also use sodium, not lithium. So there's an abundance of sodium. It's a very, very cheap material. The average cost for sodium ion cells in 2024 was $87 per kilowatt hour a month ago. It's now dropped to around $70 per kilowatt hour, around $75 per kilowatt hour. So it's marginally cheaper than lithium ion cells, but it's not yet cheaper than lithium ion phosphate. However, it will be soon. Assuming a similar capex cost to lithium ion based battery, battery energy storage systems at $300 per kilowatt hour, sodium ion batteries 57% improvement rate will see them increasingly more affordable than lithium ion cells, reaching around $10 per kilowatt hour by 2028. $10 per kilowatt hour. 
If that was to happen, and artificial intelligence is saying it almost certainly will, that would mean that Tony Sieber's claims that an EV will cost only $5,000 in 2030, as outlandish as they sound, could in fact be true. $10 per kilowatt hour would basically make the internal combustion engine, well, it would prove that it is an, a dinosaur and it would be basically finished. There is no possible way that really any battery form could compete with that either. According to Get Focus, achieving a cost of around $50 per kilowatt hour is essential for battery energy storage to be economically viable for grid scale in renewable energy applications. Powertechnology.com says that that is the point when energy storage matches the cost of using dispatchable power sources like gas-fired power plants, says Gorski. In comparison with other forms of long-duration energy storage, batteries are the best way to store energy, according to Gorski. You can develop a new generation of batteries incredibly quickly in comparison to something like compressed air energy storage. With all that infrastructure, he says, you can tweak the chemistry quickly and you can do it on a small scale and be fairly confident that you'll be able to ramp it up to whatever storage requirement you need. But it is a bit horses for courses with long duration energy storage, he says. There might be some other solutions like the phase change or CAES that are more attractive in certain locations. So it really depends on your environment, where you are, what your grid is made up of. Sumitomo Electric Industries, Hitachi and Yusa Battery are the leading developers of sodium ion battery technology, says the report. But it appears as though they're obviously ignoring the fact that the biggest company in the world, CATL, is probably leading when it comes to sodium ion battery deployment right now. Although the companies are yet to commercialize their technologies, Chinese battery company Great Power last year announced a 50 megawatt, 100 megawatt hour long duration energy storage project to power a data center demonstrating that sodium ion batteries are already under consideration for energy storage. China will probably lead the way for sodium ion battery production, say experts. Europe and the US don't have the appetite for the dangers of battery production. Just last week, a fire at a lithium battery plant in South Korea killed 22 people and injured eight. Now, is that actually true? Well, no, it's not. I mean, yeah, there can be fires at lithium factories, but they're incredibly rare. And the reality is that um, actually the number of battery factories being built in the United States is enormous. There'll be enough battery production for every single car to be fully electric by 2028. However, the supremacy of sodium ion technology is still far from guaranteed. Manufacturers will have work to do to improve energy density and round trip efficiency with ongoing improvements aimed at increasing the battery's longevity and life cycle performance. Those are needed, and they are happening. There are also unknowns around the production, said Gorski. We are assuming you can turn a lithium ion battery production facility into a sodium ion battery production facility without too many issues. And that's the key. Much of the technology's fate lies in the hands of policymakers with many eyes on China and the US as to how they incentivize production. Gorski predicts energy storage or long duration energy storage will be boosted if President Biden wins a second term in the upcoming US election, with speeding up the energy transition a key priority for the administration. Now, of course, Biden has dropped out, it's now Kamala Harris, but the same thing would apply. If we are going to take this transition seriously, we'll need an awful lot of megawatts to be stored reliably. In Europe, we need to store this energy for nine months. The cost drop we are forecasting for sodium ion would make it very attractive for that purpose. Sodium ion batteries' compact footprint and cost-effective integration with renewable sources will position them as the dominant long-duration energy storage technology for a variety of applications. Their versatility, applicability for both front of the meter, such as near wind or solar farms, and behind the meter has them poised to revolutionize energy storage all around the world. However, the technology may have another superpower up its sleeve. Experts believe it has the potential to truly democratize power in the future. And that's a good point. Really only one country in the world is en masse actually processing lithium. That's China. China essentially holds all the power when it comes to 
lithium processing. Eventually, households will be able to link their solar panels using sodium from wherever, doesn't have to be from China, and they will be able to have their own battery storage. Batteries in the garage, solar panels on their roofs, all of this won't necessarily have to come from any one country. And it means that uh, consumers won't be beholden to their energy uh, network, to their governments, to whoever is the controlling power in that country when it comes to energy generation. It also means there's no dependence on fossil fuels for running their car. They'd have to rely on whatever country, Saudi Arabia, to produce oil for them. If we are able to package it up in a way that makes sense for the average consumer, suddenly they can be less reliant on the geopolitical or energy price swings. The future is very bright. This could happen in less than a decade.